What's the word, y'all? Hey, man, I got to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed. Even though my expectations were not high for a trade to go through on December 15th, when we saw the Ben Simmons report a couple days before, I thought we might have a possibility. Uh, because if you didn't know, December 15th is the day that 83% of the league became eligible to be traded. Y'all know I'm a trade guy. You know what I do on my main channel? I like to see teams make trades and try, try to see how those going to work. Um, but we got pump fake. This is cool, though. In today's video, we are reacting to the updated trade target list for every NBA team. This is for Zach Buckley. And I'm just curious to see what Bleach Report think that every team should be looking to do. Obviously, every team will not be making the trade one, you know, between now and the trade deadline. But hopefully, we see some type of movement. But this is what keeps going through my mind when I'm thinking about trades, and specifically with my Chicago Bulls because I'm a homer and I think about the Bulls often. Is it worth it to package in two to three quality players to go get somebody bigger for the bigger name for the better player in 2021, 2022, where we're seeing across the league teams having to play with nine players and three of them be G leaguers or or teams having games completely postponed. Depth might be the most important thing you can have in a season like this. So those are the type of conversations and things I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about teams potentially making trades right now. All right, shout out to Zach Buckley and the people over at BR. We are starting off with the Atlanta Hawks. And I would guess just by this picture, they're talking about the, the defense because the defense has not been up to par. Atlanta Hawks have been a very, very weird team for me this season. I still don't know how to gauge whether or not they're going to be a team that might fight to be the real deal just because of what happened last year. But they're saying Marcus Smart, Justin Holiday, Garrett Temple, and what those three people have in common is they can raise the defensive floor of the team because right now it's close to the floor. Also, what I'm thinking in my head, so you're going to give me a target list, but how do we make that happen? Now, the Atlanta Hawks have so many assets and stuff that making a trade for a person is not that big of a deal. You have to figure out whether or not the Celtics are willing to sell Marcus Smart. But they have so many pieces. I feel like the Atlanta Hawks can be a team that can make those trades. But some other teams we're going to look at, it make me question whether or not they can do those type of deals. Oh, <laughs> the Boston Celtics have Cam Reddish and they have Marcus Smart. Let's make a deal happen. Uh, that, that's funny, though. I was expecting the Boston Celtics to have a higher end talent on this list. More than Cam Reddish, who could be higher end in a few years, whatever, or Brent Forbes or Terrence Ross, I would expect them to be trying to go get that third star because though the team doesn't work well right now, I just feel like they're still a third star away from doing anything of value. Brooklyn Nets, Ben Simmons, Christian Wood, Mike Muscala. See, now this is these are the type of things I like. Give me a super high end potential trade, give me a mid tier trade, and give me a trade that, ah, oh, if everything don't work out, let's go get this dude. Give me a super good medium tier and, and low tier talent. And I like, I mean, well, that's disrespectful to these two dudes because Christian Wood's better than the middle tier and Mike Muscala is better than the low tier, but you understand what I'm saying. Charlotte 100% needs center play. 100% needs center play, my guy. Yesterday, even though it was a well-rounded game, the Phoenix Suns end up dominating, and DeAndre Aiden looked great. I think he finished with like 15 total points, but they let DeAndre Aiden score 15, and then uh, um, JaVale McGee had like 20 off the bench. At that point, you you have to buckle in and go get you a center, and Miles Turner, I mentioned in the video when the Indiana Pacers were saying they were starting to sell, that Miles Turner should be on the priority list of the Charlotte Hornets more than anything ever, ever. Mobama's a good case. And then Derek Favors, I would love to see Derek Favors on a new team just because I still believe he's a contributing player for a team to try to make a playoff push or something like that, uh, similar to some of the other OKC players in previous years. I, okay, I like that. I like that. I think the Bulls definitely need bigger wings that can come in to defend, play the three and the four a little bit more. We definitely lack in that position. Um, if one person goes down, now we're scrambling and we're running people that are normally guards at power forward. So <laughs> I like the idea of maybe HB or Radish if you're looking for another player to grow with this team and grow with Zach Levine and all those players. Um, but what what are you saying in this insert? If the Bulls want to keep riding this wave, uh, they could go big at the deadline, provided they're willing to cut ties with both Patrick Williams and Kobe White. I hate that. If I'm throwing Patrick Williams and, and Kobe White to a trade, I want it to be better than Harrison Barnes. But again, we talked about this before. I don't know if I'm overvaluing Patrick Williams, but if we traded Patrick Williams and got back Harrison Barnes for what? two seasons I'd be kind of disappointed in us unless we win a championship which I doubt Harrison Barnes is making us win a championship um so if I'm trading Pat give me something higher tier than this I don't know if that exists right now but that's just what I'm thinking in my mind I have come to the conclusion that I would be willing to trade Kobe White though the Cavaliers 
This, okay, so this is a good top-end, mid-tier, low-tier type talent. The Cavaliers are the surprise team of the entire NBA. I think they're sitting at the four seed or maybe even the three seed at this point of the NBA season. They're in a six-game win streak. And even though their defense has been stellar going from one of the worst defense in the league to one of the best, they can still use some more scoring. And Brandon Ingram will be nice there. I don't know how the heck you make that happen or whether or not the Pelicans are looking to do that, especially since they still believe that they can make a playoff push, I guess, with Zion coming back in eight weeks or whatever it is. Um, but Brandon Ingram in that uniform will be kind of tough. Um, and I just don't know what the Pelicans will be willing to accept for a Brandon Ingram trade right now. But a young guy like Cam Reddish to, to grow with the young core will be dope. I'm seeing that Cam Reddish is on everybody's target list so far. He has been on, if you need a perimeter player or a wing, Cam Reddish is the guy. And I guess it kind of makes sense because Shams reported a couple weeks ago that they were listening to Cam Reddish offers. So, sure, if you need some guy that to grow, to grow the team, Cam Reddish is a dude. But we've seen six teams and four of them, Cam Reddish is on it. I think the Dallas Mavericks still need to be looking for a secondary star. I like Porzingis and he's having a solid season. But if Porzingis was the third best player on your team, that would be dope. Um, I don't think Miles Turner is the second best star, or even Jeremy Grant is the second best star. But if you could somehow get DeMontis a bonus to the team, that would be crazy. I like that a lot. But you have to be willing to maybe part ways with Porzingis. And ah, the Dallas Mavericks, I made a whole video about, I don't know how the heck they, they make this team better for their future. Go check that out. Denver was a team I wasn't going to guess whatsoever. They have Karis LeVert, Cam Reddis, and um, Aaron Neesmith. I don't know how you make a Karis LeVert trade happen, but it's the NBA. And any trade can happen if you have the right people trying to make the trade. Three teamers, four teamers, all of that stuff. Oh, so the Detroit Pistons got draft picks. Okay, now that I know that's a sign, I'm going to try to predict some of the next ones. So draft picks, Tyler Horn Tucker, or Taylor Horn Tucker, and Marvin Bagley. This means this is the Jeremy Grant to the Lakers trade. That's what they're trying to do. I don't, I don't know if the Detroit Pistons are trading Jeremy Grant for just Horn Tucker and some roster filler. Um, you gonna, I would want tra if I am trading Jeremy Grant away, which it seems like they might be looking to do at this deadline. I'm looking for this more than I'm looking for this. You feel me? I want future assets more than players that teams are willing to give up on. Even though I think that talent Taylor Horn Tucker can be solid, I just don't know. Next team is the Warriors. What do the Warriors need? Give give them another big. I'm not talking about a dude that could come in and be the starter. Or just give them big depth and when they are going against those bigger bodies. Or give them... Ken okay, okay. Turner, Alex Leonard, Kenny Hustle. I would love to see Kenny Hustle on the Bulls. Because I feel like his value is not super high that you have to trade Patrick Williams or Kobe White. You might be able to slide him in there with just some, a little, little draft capital, a little seconds or whatever. I think Kenny Hustle can help a team dramatically off the bench and just be a very solid player. There's a video coming out very soon. Um, the Kenny for your All-Stars. And spoiler alert, Kenny Hustle is one of those players. Don't let him go to the Warriors, though. Let him go somewhere, <laughs> let him go somewhere else. All right, next team. Rockets, I saw that they said Detroit Pistons draft picks. I'm guessing the same thing here. Draft picks, Jackson Hayes, and Jalen Johnson of the Atlanta Hawks. Okay, I can't complain there too much. Um, draft picks, draft picks, draft picks. Even though they are 8-5 and five or whatever it is in their last 13 or so, you still want to get your draft uh, capital up. Next team, Pacers. I don't know. Ben Simmons, okay. P.J. Washington and Cam Reddish. All right, the Ben Simmons trade is, is I don't know. But the P.J. Washington trade is if you're trading Miles Turner to the Charlotte Hornets plus whatever, whatever. And Cam Reddish, I don't know what the Pacers are looking to do. I know they said they wanted to hit a little bit of a reset. We don't know if they want a complete reset. And a complete reset, you're looking for draft capital. But they might not be willing to do that in Indianapolis where they're trying to continue to get people to come watch them play. So I don't know. Next team, DeMontis Sabonis, Karis LeVert, and Tyus Jones. I've, I've actually seen Clippers fans say this to me when I was asking about a... Sabonis trade, but what are what are you giving up to get Sabonis? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you have that the Pacers would be like, yeah, we'll take that as the centerpiece of a Sabonis trade? When other teams have, have more picks or better young assets, I just don't know how like yeah, it would be dope that next season they had Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and and Sabonis. That's a squad. But just I just don't know how you get there. Lakers, they're going to have Jeremy Grant because they already had the Horton Tucker trade. Yep, Jeremy Grant, Justin Holiday, Kim Rich Williams. They all, I would love for them to try to look for a big man that can rebound the ball or at least box out because you saw yesterday they still struggle on the glass. And I know they were missing a couple players and one of them being Anthony Davis, but they still need players that can rebound. Miles Bridges as a trade target. Interesting. I mean, I guess this is saying that, hey, 
the Charlotte Hornets are willing to trade to to pay Miles Bridges the amount of money that he probably wants after this breakout season. But the way Miles Bridges and Lamelo Ball play together or like each other so much, I'm doing whatever Lamelo Ball thinks is best for the team. And I think re-signing Miles is probably better and deciding what you want to do with Gordon Hayward is the better. Like I would I would pick Miles over Gordon it, for my future. That is Ben McLemore. Okay, we just gonna look past that. The Bucks. More three and more people that can shoot. More people that can shoot. Okay. Um uh Ben Simmons. I kind of expected that. It had been rumored for a long time that they were interested in Ben. I just don't know how you make it happen. For that is young, I'm surprised it's the first time we're seeing him 18 teams in because he has definitely expressed that he is unhappy with his current situation and and, and with the Spurs. Um and he feels like a person that can come into a team and help them play. So for the Pels, they're seeing draft pick Bagley and Bowl. I wouldn't expect them to say, hey, Pelicans, go sell, because you're getting draft picks you're selling. And this is taking a flyer on two dudes who haven't worked out in the first stop. New Orleans won't go on a fire sale route, but should shop arguably anyone named William, not named Williamson and Brandon Ingram. I, I, I don't know. The Knicks, Dame. Okay, well, Dame's starting to hoop a little bit. And the team on a two-game win streak got to be in one and nine. So I don't know. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox and Karis LeVert. Um, maybe more realistic options. The Knicks, uh, say what you want about the Knicks and their struggles right now. They have assets. If, if a superstar player were to say, hey, I want out, and it might be Dame or this player, this player, the Knicks would be able to put together an enticing package. They still got a pick from the Dallas Mavericks that have to convey. I think they have another pick. I don't remember if it's from the Lakers. or It's a, one other pick that's not theirs, and they still got all their picks. They have quickly Obi Toppin, uh, RJ Barrett, a combination of some of those dudes, his young assets to be thrown in the trade. They got salary filler in because you may want to give up on... <laughs> salary filler of Evan Fournier, but he's got like three years left on his day. I don't know. The Knicks have enough to put together a solid package if they wanted to go buy in on a star. It's just whether or not a star will become available. 21st team. Okay, see, so give them more draft picks. Mo Bamba, Bo Bo. Cool. Next, Magic. First round pick, Reddish, <laughs> Horton Tucker. Their picture is like, get rid of Terrence Ross while you can. Not that he's bad, but like, do whatever you can and use... Terrence Ross to get first round picks, get one of these other dudes. So for the 76ers, these are uh, Ben Simmons trade packages, potentially. Dame, Jalen Brown, Tyrese. We will not be talking about Ben Simmons much more unless some big news come out that he has been traded or a trade is about to happen. Phoenix Suns. Okay, so there's another Thaddeus Young. Robert Covington has been coming off the bench the last couple games. And Reggie Bullock. I just, I mean, it seems like the 76ers aren't giving you Ben Simmons without getting Dame. I don't think Demontis Sabonis for CJ McCullough makes sense for the Pacers. So I just don't know how you make these two happen. Harrison Barnes might be the most realistic thing there. The Kings, Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant will be a nice player to ha have on the Kings for sure. Glue guy type dude. DeAndre Hunter, interesting. And Karis LeVert. The, ki the Kings are in an interesting spot. They're seeing a lot of point Tyrese Halliburton over the last couple days and it's been working out well for them. Um, he's looked amazing with the as the primary ball handler, and I'm excited about that as a friend of his. And they have to make the decisions, man. They have to make the tough decisions on on what to do with this team. And just keeping it the way it is currently is not going to be enough to get what you want done. So you have to do something. And I'm excited to figure out what the heck they decide to do. Next, the Spurs. They're in an interesting spot. Brandon Ingram, Ben Simmons, draft picks. Okay, this is a conversation I've had with the guys. How valuable are the Spurs pieces, not named DeJounte Murray? How valuable is Keldon Johnson, Lonnie Walker, Derek White, Brent Forbes, Devin Vassell, like all of those players that might be on the mark? I just don't know how to gauge their value across the league. If I am the Spurs, I'm everybody is available not named DeJounte Murray. Everybody. And you see trades right here, Brandon Ingram, Ben Simmons, I would add DeMontis a bonus. But will those other teams be interested in trading for those other players? How valuable are they in those type of trades? Raptors, Christian Wood, Mobamba, Jackson Hayes, yes, because their center and pressure to you cannot score from three feet um, in front of the rim. Utah Jazz, Jeremy Grant, Cam Reddish, Garrett Temple. If Jeremy Grant found his way in Utah somehow and they still kept that core, that would be deadly for the league. And the very last one is Cam Reddish, who ended up on... 27 out of 30 teams trade target list is he the hottest commodity on the market right now maybe josh hart and kenny hustle i don't know man let me know 
who you think your team should be targeting right now. Um, if they're on this list or if they're not on this list, the comment section is always open. Um, I got my Kenny All-Stars ready. I just got to film the video. I don't know if I want to use footage or whatever. I don't know. But expect the video tomorrow, and I'll see y'all then. Peace.